One of the issues in finishing third in the Premier League and qualifying for Champions League football is that other teams take notice, and then they start noticing the players you used to accomplish that feat. And then they start coming after them. It didn't help that my transfer budget at the beginning of the transfer window was very, very small. It doesn't help that I'm still only getting 35% of the transfer revenue. That said, this was perhaps the busiest transfer window I have spent any amount of time on. I've literally taken two days off of recording just to kick back and compress and relax from it all. It was that mind-numbingly exhausting. At the end of the day, I don't think we got better as a team. At the same time, we lost a few players, but we brought a couple players in, and I don't think we got demonstrably worse either. I will leave that up to you. We'll take a look at the transfer window today. Maybe get a live comment. It depends on how long it takes me to go through the transfer window, and we'll have to see what happens. My name is F. Angelico, and this is the Palace March, Episode 3. Well, we're going to start with the transfers, and we're going to start on the outs. No really recognizable names here. A lot of them were players that I brought in, hoping to make a little bit of money on. A lot of them came out on freeze. Probably the most recognizable names are going to be Jason Iangolokilo and Naya Kirby. They were both original youth team members when I took over the club. Christian, eh, I swung and missed on him. It happens. You know, I'm going to take a swing and miss on a few players, but almost all. All of these players I brought in on freeze, and they're leaving on freeze. On the free transfers, only one transfer in. Alan Ramston from Cardiff Met Uni, home of the great Harry Owen. My scout in Wales found him. Two-star current ability, four-and-a-half-star potential ability, 18-year-old keeper. I don't know why the arrows are going down like that. It's really kind of frustrating, but he's got potential in on a free We'll see what happens. I've already loaned him out, and he's actually doing a pretty decent job at Skunkthorpe. Um, this is the Andromeda skin. It's one I've used in the past. I like it. Uh, it's got a couple issues that um, I'll address later. That's more of a personal taste thing than anything else. Uh, you have to join the Andromeda Facebook group to download it, but that's not a horrible, horrible thing by any stretch of the imagination. It's very customizable in terms of the number of panels it has. Um, I like that it's a dark skin. As I said, I've used it before, but there are a couple things I would change about it if I could. Lord knows I am not a programmer by any stretch of the imagination, but if you go to the Facebook group and make requests, they'll get answered or they won't. Loan deals. Holy cow, was I, was I a busy guy on loan deals. 20 players out on loan. All of them have at least 50% of their wages being paid if they're starting and 100% of their wages if they're not playing. A couple of players went to crew. Um, I tried loaning teams out to more overseas teams as well. The one I was really, well, there were three I was kind of iffy on. The first was Gennaro Ruggiero. Parma came asking for him, and I loaned him out. And chances are I'll probably call him back in the January transfer window. Herbie Kane went to Barnsley. They came asking for him. I'm Part of me just wants to think they thought they were getting Harry Kane, and they're not. They're getting Herbie Kane. And then Sanderberg, who is frankly lost in the midfield shuffle, I tried moving him on uh, on a transfer, and there were absolutely no takers for him. I set him out there on loan, and Frankfurt's paying 100% of his salary and 100% of his fees if he's sitting. A lot of these players fall in the 18 to 23 range of I need to get them first team playing time, and they're not going to get it here. So let's try and get them first-team playing time somewhere else. Uh, as a side note, Paul Glatzel, who is on loan at Barnsley, last year at Crawley had a really good season. 45 appearances, 18 goals, 3 assists, 3 players in the match. Was up for League 2 Young Player of the Year. I think he came in second. This is where the fun really kind of began. Had a couple teams come in for Luka Milivievic. And his agent was like, I'm not interested in going there, so I was happy turning them down. Chelsea came in for him. Chelsea, who's won the Premier League in back-to-back -back years, came in for him, and he was all, I really, really want to go there. I really didn't want to let him go. But at the same time, he's a team leader. If I didn't let him go, there would have been hell to pay. 
And so he ends up going to Chelsea. 28.5 million up front, going to 35.5 million. A lot of that is appearance fees in the Premier League. Some of that is international fees. I felt comfortable letting him go because I think we're okay on the midfield line with who we have. Plus, I have some future transfers coming in, which I'm not going to show you till the January transfer window, but I'm really excited about those. Luca was six and one half dozen of the other. He. He's a 30-year-old four-star current four-star potential ability midfielder who is going to decline. He wasn't going to be a full-time starter this year. Getting that amount of money from Chelsea for him was probably the best I was going to get at this point because I don't think I would be getting that much one or two years down the road. Francisco Vicari ends up going to Lazio for £9 million. Pounds. Lost a little bit of money on him. He came in for 12 and a half, but he was just... He was declining in skills. He ended last year as a three-star current, three-and-a-half-star potential player. And with the defensive center backs I have now, he wasn't going to be a full-time starter. 27 years old. I figured I'd move him on now for money, getting close to what I brought him in for. I'm okay with that. I made up most of what I lost on Vicari with uh, Alberto Soro. He was uh, an advanced midfielder primarily, but a backup on the midfield line, and he just was not getting any playing time. Uh, I put him out there on loan. Sampdoria came in for him, 3.6 million pounds. I brought him in for 250,000 pounds. So that makes up almost the difference in Vicari here. Santos didn't develop like I wanted. As, you know, I brought him in. He couldn't get a permit. He finally got a permit when the new Brexit rules took place. And he just wasn't the player I thought he was going to be. Yeah, this says four-star potential ability, but he that was three stars when I had him. And he just was not getting any better. As you can see, the one season here was, was okay, but I've got better younger options on the roster that I wanted to get playing time on. I put him out there. Uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach snapped him up. 6.5 million pounds going to 7 million pounds based on appearance fees. I brought him in for 5.5, and then there was that loan spell he had in at Atlanta where I got almost 1.5 million pounds for that in addition they were paying his salary, so I came out ahead there. Uh, Levi Lemeca was a youth player, original to the team, played advanced midfielder on the left, also played midfield left, positions I don't play with my 4-3-3, had been out on loan, played him on the midfield line a couple of times in a couple of cup games in that. He just never really impressed. Got 105,000 pounds for him from Bolton, going up to 130,000 pounds with appearance fees. I don't think that was value, but at the same time, you know, he, he wasn't going to get any playing time here. I got a little bit of money off of him as opposed to letting him walk for free like happened with Nia Kirby and the others. Robert Mazan was another one of the players that I brought in. Brought him in for $1.3 million, let him go for 650,000 pounds. He just didn't turn into the player I thought he would be. I think at the end of the day, we came close to making up the money on him, though, because he went out on loan to Getafe. Let's check that out here. Yeah, he was on loan to Getafe for a year, and they paid 100% of his salary as well. So we lost a little bit of money there. Uh, Rita Benyaha was actually a youth player I brought in last year, hoping to develop. He's got some potential, but then again, he's also an attacking midfielder on the right and a, and a midfielder on the right. I was training him as a midfielder center. Uh, DH Al Jadida, which I want to say is a Tunisian team. Oh, they're Moroccan. They made an unsolicited offer for him for like 70,000 pounds. I tweaked them up to 84. Comes in on a free, leaves for 84,000 pounds. I'm okay with that. On the ends, not very active there, at least for now. Like I said, the future transfers I have coming in, those will be, those will be nice. Uh, Louis Alexander comes in from Guimaraes. Two and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential ability. Defensive midfielder, defensive center back, also plays uh, an okay midfielder. 18 years old, pretty decent physicals for right now. Mentals, they're not bad. I like the 14 determination. The 15 bravery is also nice. The seven flare, eight off the ball, and nine positioning are a little bit troublesome. But then again, he's more a defensive player than anything else. The technicals, they're not bad where they count. I do like the uh, 15 tackling, the 15 technique. The 10 markings a little bit on the on the uh, young side. Uh, the only drawback to getting him in is that he's here on a youth work permit, so he cannot play any first-team games. I thought about loaning him out, but I figured I'd keep him on the under-23s. We're actually playing some really quality under-23 teams, so he'll get a workout there. Next in, Laurent Casa from Mallorca. 
in for 145,000 pounds. He came up on the scouting chart, one and a half star current ability, four star potential ability. I really like his physicals, the 16 agility, the 14 acceleration, 14 jumping reach are very nice, as is the 15 strength. His mentals are really good where they count. You know, I like the 14 work rate, 14 determination, 15 bravery, 15 anticipation. And the technicals, they're a little lacking. I'll be the first to admit that. But I do like the 14 marking. The 9 tackling can be worked on. That's actually what I'm training him on right now. Another player who comes in on a youth work permit. It's possible he may never see some first team playing time here. But he can develop into a player that I can sell for, I would think, a decent amount of money. If not break even. Especially if his physicals and the technicals where they count keep going up. Then comes NECA. Onana got injured last year and lost a half star as a result of his ability and potential ability. He's now topped out at three-star current, three-star potential. Felix Weedwald did a credible job for us the last 10 games of the season. As a matter of fact, the fact that he was a little bit better than average between the sticks was one of the big reasons we finished in third place. But I had my scouts out and about, and they found NECA in Brazil. They had actually found him two years ago when uh, Fortaleza, Fortezalo? I don't, Fortaleza, that's who it is. I don't have, I have the name fix installed, but if you start a save, then install the name fix, it doesn't go back and fix the Brazilian teams. Um, he was on Fortaleza when they were relegated from Serie A to Serie B in Brazil, and he was their starting keeper, and he was really good for them. And then for whatever reason, he only had, 22 starts for them last season. Finished on a 7-3 and was transfer listed by request. 19 years old, goalkeeper, pretty decent sweeper keeper, and he's almost as good as or better than Onana in most of the key areas. His physicals are nice. His mentals are nice. I love the 17 bravery. The 16 decision making is great, as is the 15 vision. The 12 determination is a plus. I mean, it's not below 10. His goalkeeping skills, 16 aerial reach, 16 handling, 16 reflexes. The first touch rushing out and tendency to punch the ball are a little bit on the low side, but 19 years old, 3.5 star current ability, 5 star potential ability. For 6.5 million pounds potentially, I think that's well worth it. No, it's 6.5 million pounds going up to 10 million pounds. Okay. And then the big uh, money this year, Felix Udukai from Wolfsburg. With Riedewald going out last year, Vulcans being a lone player, my best defensive left back is 2.5 star current, 2.5 star potential, Joe Bryan. Uh, I went looking for some younger left backs that were pure defensive left backs, and I could not find anybody willing to come here. A couple days before the transfer window closed, Felix Udakai was put on loan by request uh, from Wolfsburg. He is primarily a defensive center back. I am training him to be a defensive left back. He's getting better at it. He will get almost all the first team starts this year. I really like him. You know, the physicals are nice. The mentals are nice. The technicals we could use a little help. I am working on those. Three-star current ability, four-star potential ability player. I probably overpaid for him a little bit. But he was never a full-time starter at Wolfsburg. And, frankly, they count way ahead on him. It's one of the things with the skin I haven't found yet is what his current value is. I'm sure it's under here in one of the oh, value, $17 million. Yeah. So chances are I may have overpaid for him, but I think he will be here two, three, possibly four years. Uh, at one point in time, I looked at starting Timmy Sobawale, who is my two-star current, four-star potential defensive left back. He's an inverted wing back which is a position I am not comfortable playing in the 4-3-3. And I thought about retraining him, and it just it's not something I think I'd want to do uh, first-team playing time with. And frankly, I had the money. A lot of this came from the Miljevic sale and then some creative financing with the uh, transfer budget in that. So bringing him in, I think, was well worth it. Schedule-wise, as you can see, we are off to a really good start. This is one of the few drawbacks I have about this skin. I like the L's and W's, but they just the color combination is wrong, at least for me. Um, got pretty aggressive in the preseason. Wanted to play some more quality opponents. 
uh, Leon and Celtic are our quality opponents, as is Dortmund. The others were all lower league teams, um, mostly my affiliates. Ross County asked us to play them, and we said, yeah, sure. And that's before I realized we played on the 25th and had a game on the 29th. That was a fully rotated side there, and we lost 3-0. It happens. And then uh, the last friendly was uh, Oliver Rentz. Olivier Rentz. I'm sorry. But we beat them 4-0, set us up really well for the start of the Premier League, and boy, did we get off to a flying start. First, we were home against Aston Villa, and we won there 3-2. Goals, an 8th-minute goal. Uh, Santiago, a 17th-minute goal. Borja Mayoral, a 77th-minute goal. That was after Carl Annetti got sent off for a double yellow card within the space of two minutes. It was really, really frustrating. And I find him, and he was totally upset. He's my captain this year now. And he was like, why am I getting fined? And I'm like, dude, seriously? Uh, Willie Bully and uh, Emil Bergreen had goals for Aston Villa. We just, we totally dominated them. 28 shots, 11 on target, huge possession advantage. They had eight shots, four on target. We were just, the the offense was just absolutely clicking. I'm really surprised we didn't get more than three. And I'm kind of miffed they got more than one. As first games go, this was a good, good start. We were then away at Leicester, and we won there 2-1. This was a much more even game. Leicester had 18 shots, 11 on target. We had 18 shots, 7 on target. Uh, Borges Mayoral, a 33rd-minute goal. A Jetty 78th-minute goal was the one that put us ahead a for sure, which was nice because uh, Philip Benkovic scored a minute later off the ensuing kickoff to make the score look closer than it actually was. Neca had a really good game. Tonali was fabulous. He has really blossomed into the wonder kid I thought he would be when I signed him from Brescia at 18 years old. My only concern now is keeping him healthy the entire season, which I'm going to try and do. He's not playing the full games uh, more often than not. We were then home against Man United, and I thought about doing this as a live comp, but then I saw that Chelsea came up after so I said, we'll do Chelsea because they'll probably be top of the league. But anyhow, we were uh, home against Man United. They had more shots than us. They didn't have as many on target. They had a slight possession advantage. But as you can see, we were just so much better than them. It wasn't, it wasn't even funny. I'm surprised we only got two. Again, Mayoral and Ajeti with the goals. We were better than them offensively. We were better than them defensively. It was just an all-around good game. The only one who really faltered was Savlik, and that's because he was just absolutely getting abused by Sanchez, which happens. You know, he's still young. He's 19 years old this season. He's going to grow into that four-and-a-half star potential. So today, we are playing Chelsea. And as you can see, with a game in hand... We are both contending for top of the league. Currently, it's Arsenal with uh, 12. Man City's there with 10. We're doing really, really well. The other thing I think is kind of surprising, Hang Kwang Song uh, leads the team with two assists, and he hasn't started a game yet. It's been kind of fun. I take that back. He has started a game. But anyhow, we are off to a really good start, and I'm hoping we can keep it up. So I'm going to uh, double-check my best 11 here. And we're going to come back with the game at Chelsea in just a bit. Now, this is one of the screens I do like about this skin, the team comparison. I think it's very, very cool. The only drawback I have is that it doesn't reflect my tactic. No matter what I put in there, it always puts me out there as a 4-4-2. Which, I mean, I'm old, but I'm not that old school. The other thing I do like is this match intro screen. I think this is really cool. Uh, I had a similar screens on my infield town save. I put music to it, but I'm not going to do that with the save here. Uh, as you can see, the another team comparison. Again, really, really nice. Um, maybe giving away what they're playing is a bit too much, but that's just a minor quibble on my part. I suspect if there was a way to hide that, you probably could. As you can see, we are playing our 4-3-3. Neck and goal, Udukai, Basankic, Kamara, Sablik as the defensive back four. Santiago, Tenali, and Linetti as the midfield three. Goebbels, Mayoral, and Kwang Song up top as the 
Okay, a little adjusting and tweaking there. Totally forgot to set my opposition instructions, so I had to do that now. This is probably the one screen that I have the most issues with with this skin. And that I think these here are they're too crowded. You you can't you can't adjust the columns, you can't adjust the screens. But then again, that's just a personal quibble. Udakai with the throw in to Santiago, up to Tamale, back to Gubbles, back to Udakai to Santiago. Oh, taps it up. Gubbles is there, dispossessed by Aspilicueta. Is he fouled? He was. Okay. Borgia should be taking this. And he is. And he scores. And that is my wife coming home from the grocery store. I will be back in just a bit. Oh, nice kick. Oh, it looks like they fix, fixed the uh, net animation, too. Keppa with a goal kick out to Aspilicueta. Up to William. Oh, long pass, but Sablik intercepts it. Up into space. Skrinar knocks it down. Up into the crowd. Gretzka has it over to Hazard, who got behind the defender. Oh, Neko with a nice save, and Sablik kicks it out of bounds. Well done. Aspilicueta with a throw in. Knocked away by Udakai. Up to Mayoral. And he's dispossessed. Bakioko gets the ball, sends it to Goretzka. Back to Bakioko. Over to Emerson. To Hazard. Who drives left. Holds it up. Dispossessed by Sablik. Wow. Boy, that kid. Goretzka has the ball now. To Emerson. Back to Hazard. And his shot bounces off a neck and goes out of bounds for the corner kick. Skrinar over the crossbar. 30 minutes in, we're holding our own with Chelsea. Six shots, three on target for the, each of us. The mayoral penalty is what sees us ahead at this point. Coming up on halftime here. And that is the half. We are doing fairly well. We're holding our own. The mayoral penalty is uh, seeing us through. They've had nine shots, five on target. We've had six shots, three on target. Slight possession advantage for them. NECA has a 7-4. Santiago, dispossessed by Conte, but it goes to Goebbels. Over to Linetti, back to Tonali. Up to Han, who's all alone on the right. Was he off sides? Was there, ah, must have been a foul somewhere. Okay. Hazard with the corner kick in. Went right to Goebbels. Sends it up to Han. He's got three players on him. Can he cross it to Mayoral? He can. Over to Goebbels. And he's, oh, that was gorgeous. Oh, it's almost like that was planned, but I, no, it wasn't planned. Watch this. Han, he's got three Chelsea players chasing him. Passes over to Mayoral, who just taps it up to Goebbels. Oh, totally wrong. Foots the keeper. That was nice. Yeah, that deserves a cartwheel. Linetti, up to Christian. Well, it's knocked down by Christensen, but he dispossesses Goretzka. Up to Goebbels. And no, he shoots it right at Kepa. But Nasser's going to come on for Linetti. We're going to bring on Mepham for Sablik. He's had a really good game. It's not reflected in his score. Coming up on the end of the game, four minutes of extra time. Neko with a goal kick. Out to Baskanik. Totally pronouncing his name wrong, but that's how I'm going to pronounce it. Tonali. Oh, he lost the ball, but Christensen's going to run it down. Back to Keppa into the crowd, and that is the game. We just shut out Chelsea. Well done, boys. We are top of the Premier League, ahead of Arsenal on goal differential. Okay. Oh, that, that sequence for the Gubbles goal, though, that was, oh, that was nice. Crystal Palace go to top of the Premier League with a 2-0 win at Chelsea. I don't know that I've highlighted him before. This is Merkel Basankic. He comes from H.J. Rijeka. I got him two years ago, but I loaned him back to Rijeka for a year because I was wanting to see what was going to happen with Santos and a couple of the other guys. 20 years old, 3.5-star career ability, 5-star potential ability. I like this kid. Oh, 
boy, does he have potential. His physicals are pretty good, with the exception of natural fitness. I the four is just horrible, but it's getting better. It was a three at one point in time. Everything else about him, I just, I like. The mentals are very nice. The technicals are, well, they're, they're not bad. The five long throw, the five penalty taking, four free kick taking, I, I could really care about that. But the 16 marking and 16 tackling, oh yeah, that I like. You get that natural fitness up, work on his technique a little bit, he will definitely be a solid starter for years to come. Champions League group stage. Uh, we don't know who we're playing in the Champions League yet, but you know what? We're going to make that our first game. We've got Swansea and Man City in the interim, but we will come back, find out who we're playing in the group stage, and get our Champions League run underway. Money-wise, as you can see, we're already £6 million in the hole, um, the transfer window. I can't believe I totally forgot to mention this. Uh, we weren't helped out by the first two weeks because there was a consortium takeover in effect and we couldn't make any transfer moves. The ones I actually had in place got put on hold. Uh, most of those were loan deals. I lucked out in that they all went through. Uh, the consortium takeover fell through. We're still under the same ownership. As you can see, we've got about £120,000 in wage budget, £12 million in the, in the uh, transfer budget. Uh, I also upped the scouting budget. I've got two million pounds left there. That's just there, this is twofold. One, it ensures that I never run out of money in the scouting department because nothing's worse than it being mid-February and you get a note saying I can't go anywhere to scout anybody because we have no money in the scouting budget and you're already maxed out other places. And it's a way just to hide a few to hide a few bucks. It's kind of a savings account that you have access to really really quick. However, we keep playing like the way we're playing. We're definitely going to get a lot more TV money. We should see an increase in our stadium attendance. Last year, I want to say we were about 15th, but we just took 3,000 away to Chelsea. And Chelsea, I want to say, was sold out. They had 38,000 there. And this was our transfer window as a whole, excluding the future transfers, which I'm not showing you because they, they're, they're not here yet. Got to scroll down to see all the loan players. But these are all the cash players out. These are all the cash players in. We brought thirty million in. We had forty-eight and a half million go out. The vast majority of that was Luke Mulligay. That said, I think it was a pretty successful transfer window. I'd be interested in what you think down below. If you do like what you've seen and heard, please leave a like. Subscribe to the channel for more content. Questions, criticisms, comments, leave them down below. I'll answer them as fast as I can. My name is F. Angelico. I thank you for watching.